hard on your woodworking projects and want to share them with the world. I'm a guy who shoots photos of woodworking for a living and loves talking about photography. I like where this is going. Hi everyone, my name is Ian and I am a photographer and video producer here at Lee Tools. In this video we're going to go over some concepts that are useful to anyone taking pictures of their woodworking projects, regardless of your photographic ability. All of these tips apply whether you're using a smartphone or a camera. Before we dive in, please take a moment to subscribe to our channel. Lee Tools YouTube channel is your official hub for all things Lee. News, product info, and tutorials. Okay, let's talk photography. Here are Lee Tools 4 tips for better woodworking photos. One common misadventure in photography is the photo that everyone looks at but misses the point because there's too much going on in the picture. You made an amazing piece, but no one can tell from your picture. How can you enhance your subject? One simple way is to reduce the visual clutter. Tip number one, choose a suitable background. An easy way to neutralize or enhance a background is with a backdrop of craft paper. A white background will help your viewers focus on your subject without distractions. Use color to complement or contrast your piece. To set up a background, just use what you have around the shop. A couple scrap pieces of wood and a vise, some clamps and some artful draping of the paper over your bench does wonders. If you can't use a backdrop, it's best to try and isolate your subject from the background. The easiest way to do this is to shoot from further away and zoom in. Focus on the subject and the background will naturally blur. Shooting while zoomed in can also help reduce the distortion that comes with wide-angle lenses. So your project looks amazing, the stage is set, and you're rock solid ready to take a sharp handheld picture. I've got news for you. The simplest way to take sharper pictures is by not touching the camera when it takes the picture. Camera movement causes image blur. Even simply pushing the shutter release button can shake the camera. Tip number two, get the camera out of your hands. Step one. Secure the camera, usually with a tripod, but some people get creative and use a table or a clamp or whatever. Just don't blame me if your prize device hits the ground. I told you to use a tripod. There are even specialized tripods and adapters for phones, too. Almost all cameras and smartphones have a timer feature that will delay by anywhere from 2 to 10 seconds before firing. Some have a remote trigger, and some can be controlled by an app on your tablet or phone. However you do it, Step two is to remotely trigger the camera. That way you aren't adding any shake to the camera when it fires. The tips I've given you so far are practical takes on fairly traditional concepts. But I don't want you to just take good pictures. I want you to take amazing pictures. Which brings us to tip number three. Add some... Drama. Generally speaking, more light is better, but... Look what happens when we light our subject from behind. Ooh, that's different. An easy way to add some drama, flare, sizzle, whatever you want to call it, is to manipulate the light. You don't need studio lights like I have, just use what's available to you. See that? It's colored cellophane I got at the dollar store. Watch this. On sunny afternoons, there are some cool shadows here in my studio. Look what happens when I use the natural light instead of the studio lights. What if we change the angle of the camera? Or the focus point? Most phones and cameras have creative color modes you can play with. How does that enhance your pictures? Playing around with your camera settings and lighting is the best way to learn how to take better pictures. Regardless of how you do it, adding drama to your photo shades and textures the message your photo is sending. After all, photography is a form of communication. This leads us to the final tip to taking better woodworking photos. Look at this image from a famous movie. Now I'm going to show you a different image of the same thing. The elements are nearly identical, but the message is totally different. A picture is worth a thousand words. But which words? Tip number four. What story am I trying to tell? If you're communicating with your photos, it's probably best to think about the message you're trying to send. 
You control what people see by where you point the lens. You're the boss, so you get to tell the camera what to do. It's a tool just like any other in your shop. So what if your shop is cluttered and you don't want people seeing that in pictures? Don't point the camera at it. Viewers don't know what's going on just out of camera view. They only know what you show them. Composition, what makes it into the picture and what doesn't, is the key to telling a story through images. Bonus tip. People look at your pictures, not your camera. I've been working in the photo and video industry for a long time and one concrete, no doubt, undeniably clear thing is that if you produce good images, very few people care about how you did it or what you used. Don't waste your time and energy worrying about what people think of your equipment. Who cares if you're using a beat up seven year old iPhone? Spend any extra time and energy you have getting great shots of your work. Hey, that reminds me. We want to see all the amazing pieces you make with Lee products. Send us your best photos so we can feature them in our customer gallery. Be sure to check out the rest of our channel and if you like what you see, give us a subscribe and ring the bell to stay up to date. I'm Ian from Lee Tools. This has been 4 Tips for Better Woodworking Photography. Thanks for watching. Now go get in the wood shop and take some amazing pictures.